Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 16 for chapter 5 and the topic of the chapter is the Laplace transform. In this video we start our um, learning on a special function called the unit impulse function which is commonly denoted as uh, delta of t. It's also called the delta function. It's defined as follows. So delta of t is 0 everywhere except when t equals 0. Okay, So when t is not 0, it's all 0. And then right at t, it um, has some concentrated mass on it in the following sense. That is, if you integrate this delta function around t equals 0 from negative tau to tau for any small amount of tau as small as you like this integral is one okay this holds for any tau bigger than zero so one way of uh, visualizing this um, impulse function is to think it is the limit of some sequence for example, we can think this as the limit of a rectangular wave with area equals to 1. Okay. So um, we know that um, ut plus tau minus ut minus tau will be a um, rectangular wave with height 1 from um, negative tau to tau. So the total length will be 2 tau. And if you divide this by 2 tau, and this becomes a um, rectangular wave where the area equals 1. Okay, And then um, we take the limit and let tau go to 0. That means the uh, interval for this rectangular wave becomes smaller and smaller, while the height the function value, the height of the rectangular wave grows taller and taller and in the limit the interval is concentrated at just one point at zero while the whole area, kind of at the amount of area, sits just on one point. Okay, So here in this notation this function u here is the unit step function which we studied in the previous videos. Okay, so one comment is um, that this impulse function can be shifted. We can consider the function delta of t minus a. Then this function equals 0 for all t different from a. And then um, if you integrate on an interval around a of any small um, um, length, and this integral equals 1 for any tau bigger than zero. Now here is the most useful property for the delta function. Delta of t minus a, where you have an impulse at t equals a. And that is, if you integrate any interval a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon for any epsilon bigger than zero, then the integral of a function f of t times the delta of t minus a dt, if you integrate that, that equal to the function f evaluated at the a. Now in fact, um, this property can be um, well easily proved um, using the limit, the limit of a rectangular wave we talked about in the previous slides. Okay, so we can um, write it out, it won't take long. So the integral, let's say, um, of f times delta, okay, from a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon. And now um, instead of the delta function, we use the use it as the limit function. So the delta function is the limit as tau goes to zero. So the tau is very small and we can assume that the tau is less than the epsilon because epsilon is a, a fixed um, bigger than zero positive number. 
Okay, assume tau is even smaller than that. Then delta is the limit of this, of uh, one over two tau, on the interval from a minus tau to a plus tau, and outside it's zero. Right. Okay. So then um, this one can be written as the limit as tau goes to zero of this integral from a minus tau to a plus tau of the function f t times a constant 1 over 2 tau. Then um, we see that 1 over 2 tau in this case is just a constant, so we can take it out of the integral here, and then in the integral we just have um, f of t. So what is the meaning of um, this last integral? We see that the integral is from a minus tau to a plus tau, where the length of the integral is 2 tau. And we're integrating a function over this integral, and then divided by the length of the inter interval. Okay. Therefore, this quantity here, 1 over 2 tau times the integral, is exactly the average of the function f of t on this interval from a minus tau to a plus tau. So you're taking the average of this function on this interval, and then you are taking the limit as tau goes to zero. That is, this interval is becoming smaller and smaller, and then in the end reduced to a point just at a. Okay, and and therefore, um, in the limit when tau goes to zero, this average will approach f a, and it will just become f a in the limit as tau is zero. Okay, so this is a, a kind of a rough proof using um, the assumption that the delta function is the limit of rectangular waves. You can um, define it in a more general sense that it's any function, but uh, then the proof is a bit more involving. Okay, so we will just use that to have a simple proof for this property. Okay, so what does this property mean? Let's put it in words. So this means that um, for the function f t times delta t minus a, if you want to integrate this function over any interval that contains t equals a, then you would exactly get the value of f evaluated at t equals a. Okay, so let's now compute the Laplace transform of the unit impulse function and delta of t minus a for some a bigger than zero. Okay, so this can be done just by putting definitions. The Laplace transform is um, integral zero to infinity of the exponential function e to the negative st times the function which is delta of t minus a dt. And then we see that this integral contains the point a, so using the property we have just talked about here, then this integral is exactly this function value where s equals a, or where t equals a, you're integrating in t. So it's exactly e to the negative a s. Okay, so let's take an example um, for a second order differential equation with uh, a direct delta and impulse function as the force source term on the right hand side. So the left hand side is y double prime plus 4y prime plus 5y equal delta of at t minus pi. So the impulse happens at t equals pi. And the initial condition is all zero. Y is zero, zero, y prime zero is zero. So one can um, interpret um, this equation with the, a physical model as follows. We can consider the spring mass system where um, it will fit into these constants on the left hand side. And the system initially is at rest. Initial position is at the equilibrium and the initial velocity is zero. And then you wait at time equals pi, exactly at time, that time it gets a hit on the mass and it suddenly starts to move. Okay, so now let's try to um, 
solve it and let's take a Laplace transform on both sides so on the left well we already are very f um, familiar with that so this will give us a square and this is 4s and this is 5 and that the characteristic polynomial times ys equal the Laplace transform of delta which is e minus pi s okay and then and you can solve for y and algebraically is the right hand side over the left hand side and then one knows that one will eventually have to do um, inverse transform so let's work the denominator into a familiar form so this one we see that is s square plus 4 s plus 4 plus 1 where the first three terms is just s plus 2 square and then plus 1 and then with this with this and we know and the inverse transform will give us exponential times sine cosine and in fact the um, inverse Laplace transform of this function here without this exponential term here is just 1 over this would exactly be e to the negative 2t times sine t okay and we know this information is very important because uh, if you multiply by an exponential function then what happens to the inverse transform is that it gets a shift okay so let's take the inverse transform so yt would be and this function shifted by pi unit so you get u pi of t times and this function copy it here and wherever you have t you re replace it with t minus pi so we get this expression okay and then we can write it in a piecewise way because this step function is zero for t less than pi so when t is less than pi it's zero and when t is bigger than pi this is one and we just get that part so we just get that for t bigger than pi so you see that um, this solution here is actually the response to the impulse force and um, that's applied to the system at t equals pi the system initially is at rest and then it remains at rest when nothing is happening to it on the right hand side and then at t equals pi you give the system a hit and then immediately the solution the system start to move and the solution is non-zero it responds to that hit okay so that's all for this video and uh, this is the only example i will take for this impulse function because other situations are rather similar and that's all i will talk about of impulse function so next video we'll pick up a new topic okay so i hope you enjoyed this one and uh, i'll see you next time